Listen, guys, my next guest, you've seen him on the CBS show History of Them. He's also had a recurring role on Empire and as Ned, one of my favorite characters on the critically acclaimed Comedy Central series, Detroiters. And guess what? He's here tonight with us in the peak through. We'll be right back. Right back. My man, CP, what's going on? What up, dog? What up, Fish? What's the word? What's the word with you, man? Happy holiday. Man, I'm just chilling, man. I appreciate you having patience and hanging out with us, man. We had a little oh, technical anxious. Oh, that's all good. I'm actually about to put a little um put a little story up with the link right now so everybody can start, you know what I'm saying, coming to check it out. I appreciate that, man. You know man. How you been though, bro? Hey man, you know, I've been good, man. Holidays pass. That's good. We're going getting ready to go into a new year, man. I'm just excited about this upcoming year. What about you? I've been all right, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, this year, bro, you gotta count your blessings, and that's it. That's it, so right? It, your blessings, and that's it. Like, okay, <laughs> cool. We came up right there. I'm done looking at everything else. You know, that's how you gotta look at it. You gotta yeah, man. You, know, you gotta count your blessings for real. So I'm blessed, man. Shout out to all the C peeps. I the see all peaks the out here, huh? Yeah, man. Hey, man, you know what's crazy? Like, before I knew you was coming on this show, I had just watched an episode, literally found it out of nowhere, the Detroiters. Oh, and I was man. like, get out of here. This dude is on this show, man. Yeah, man. That That's was, crazy. you know, yeah, you know, so what, what's crazy is that, you know, as great of an opportunity as it was to act on that show, I always, always, I was a writer on that show. OK. And so, you know, um, just working with people like, you know, Jason Sudeikis and Tim and Sam and Lauren Michaels on a level outside of their norm, us all working together. To, you know, that was a very unique experience in a young comedian's you know, career. So, right. you know, to be able to play it was just the icing on the cake, you know, but, you know, that was a lot of my ideas and stuff. They w w I got a lot of respect in that room, you know. For yeah. just how funny I was, and I was a really, really dope experience. A great two years in my career, right there. That's crazy, man. You know, the crazy part is, I think I first saw you, but didn't know that was you until I went back and watched it on White Famous. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I didn't know that was you, dude. I'm like, wait a minute, like yeah. you just be popping up and stuff, man. Man, you know, it's just uh, you know, what's crazy, Finch? I do a lot of producing, and I, you know, I was. I, I've heard through the business and it's very true. It's a thousand mm -hmm. ways to get on in this business. Right. And so, you know, I have a lot of just a, a, a lot of the black producers in Hollywood are some of my friends. And so, you know, I get a chance to come, you know, pop in some of their shows and have fun, you know, shout out to um, uh, Jay Farrow and Jamie Foxx for that. Yeah. You know, that was a good little look, man. It was fun. I did two episodes too of that matter of fact, I don't know if the, the last thing we shot, it was pretty crazy, but, yeah, man, those dudes, man. I appreciate all the opportunities for real. That's crazy, man. So, so you started out as a comedian or was it an actor? I started off as a comedian, as okay. a comedian. But I mean, I mean, shit. Depending on how you want to look at it, I, I, I was a, uh, I came out of undergrad and I was writing commercials, and that's kind of how I, you know, I thought that silly me, I thought that I could just get close enough to the business, and that would satisfy me. Write a little commercial here and there, and right. go to a set, fly to a set. I thought that would, you know, uh, that that would be enough. I was, I was out of my damn mind. You do a commercial <laughs> and don't no credits run on that boy, and you just like don't nobody know you wrote it, and you got to go tell everybody. It's like, right, oh, you know all that. I need to be in front of the camera because you only it's YOLO, baby. You know, yeah. what I'm saying? it's like, yeah. man, you got to go for it. So you know that's how I felt. So you know, um. Yeah, as a comedian is like where I feel like my my real career started. It's like my life. So I started stand up last year. Oh, and okay. Yeah, man. You're like, rookie, huh? What are you? Hey, man, give me a ride home. You're a new, new, new comedian. Hey, give me a ride home. No, I'll just go ahead. Go yeah, ahead, man. Go ahead. And it, you know, I'm still growing into my persona you know what i'm got saying it, and it. you know it but but being on that stage man and seeing people laugh at stuff that you come up with off the off the riff you know what I'm saying? like yeah. i've seen you do stuff on like zooming with the homies i've watched you on zooming with homies and yeah. i'd be like dude the stuff this guy comes up with just off the rip i think i i saw a character but i didn't know it was you on uh what's his name clayton thomas the green guy yeah reggie bow reggie, reggie. Bo. Yeah. 
I didn't know that yeah. was you yeah, at man. first. I just used to see the character, and I'd be like, oh, yo, that dude is whoever the voice behind that dude is funny. Then when I found out it was you, I was like, wow, man. Yeah, man. I think it's amazing because as a young comic coming up, you're still learning a lot about the business. And when you see people, you'd be like, yo, I seen this guy on television. I seen this guy in this, this little skit or this little bit. And you'd be like, wow, that's so much. I'm just learning there's so much more that you can do as a comic that, you know, people don't really tell you. And I wanted to ask you. I'm gonna, hold on. I'm going to tell you something real quick. Before you even ask me that, Fish, I'm going to tell you this. As a young comedian, some advice. Um, your persona is your style. The okay. second you realize that, the second you realize it's not about what you say, it's the fact that you're saying it. So okay. everything you say, you need to say that shit with <laughs> with all your nuts behind it because it's because it's you saying it. Right. You know what I'm saying like, and so I think that you know that freed me from oh, trying to man. be like this comedian and that comedian. So I'm CP. People come to see CP. You know, whatever I'm going through that day is what's on stage. I'm talking about you know you know just how I feel. That's you know that's right. just, and so I think that my audience have got used to that. And then mm. they really starting to understand my style of comedy. And now I don't have to conform. So, but go ahead, though. That, yeah, no, listen, man. What you just said was. It was golden for me because that's, you know, to be honest with you, that's been my struggle, man, like my voice. And I remember hearing, hey, don't edit yourself. Don't censor yeah. yourself. You know, and I think I be trying to see I came from a world where I built a career as a quote unquote, motivational speaker, a, a personality. I was on radio and going into comedy. I'm like, well, I don't want to I don't necessarily not want to be that guy, but it's so much more I want to explore with my life. You know what I'm saying? Right. And sometimes I find myself battling between the two personalities, if that makes sense to you. And so yeah. hearing what you just said, it's like that's your style. Be you. And I mean, like, yeah, man, that was golden. That was gold. Hey, man, Burger King don't sell Big Macs. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you want to do something different, you got to listen. Listen, real talk. Yeah. Like, people be like, man, you know, CP, you be getting so deep and you so introspective and you so smart. I'm like, right, because for a long ass time in my life, I was Chris Powell, the honor student. You know, when mm. I became CP, I gave CP a job. CP is a comedian. Mm. CP is a showman. CP. So that allowed me, you know, I can I can. I can put shit in that brand. This is this is all CP. When I'm ready yeah. to write my book, that's gonna be Chris Powell. When I write these shows, that's all Chris Powell. You know, when mm -hmm. it's when I'm when it's time to cast them checks, that's Chris <laughs> Powell. But you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, yeah. CP is is my expression. Reggie Bo is an extension of CP. It's just mm -hmm. a way to get out all of the junk that we've taken in, you know, like right. somebody like myself, I observe, observe, observe all these people, these uncles and these, you know, and, and then you just, after a while, bro, I just, as a, as a creator, I just began to just boof, you know, everything is just started coming out of me, bro. I'm doing this character, that character, and I'm in these voices. And I, you know, it just was like, I unlocked my shit. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, and that's yeah. how I felt. That's a that's a great word. Unlocking. Um, and that's what I got to do, man. Like that was one of the other reasons I started this podcast this season, because I felt like the more I do as Finch, the more I don't have to be Mo. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like yeah. the more I become because, you know, j what you just said, the Powell guy versus CP, you know, they still the same person. Mm -hmm. But they just have different personalities when it comes to the job that you assign yeah. for them to do. So, yeah, I man. I don't want comedian CP raising my children. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. Like, real, you know, right. like, you know, this is this is these is these is Chris Powell kids. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's how it has to, you know, because you know, I want them, you know, they don't, it's just that's how I look at it. And that helps me. Yeah. Yeah, man. Dude, you don't know how much you just helped me with that. Wow, like, that's deep. That's deep. Chris Powell versus CP, Mo Steagle versus Harold Fence. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. Like, cause you're right. Like, I heard somebody say, like, uh, Harold Fence is not the guy I want to date. <laughs> you know? He's oh, not the man. guy. See? <laughs> because yeah. you know he has a whole different persona. He he speaks his mind. He he doesn't care what you think about him. Now, Mo don't care what you think about him either. But Harold Fence really don't care what you think about, him, and he's gonna say whatever he wants to say. And he's 
he might say it in love. He might not. You know, Man, I'm going to give you some more game. Start looking into the phonetics of your name. Understand that all of these words that we use are sounds, our names included. So start uh -huh. looking at the power and the sounds of, of what people call you. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. you know, like the phonetics. Man, it's deep, bro. Like CP is just so striking. People be like, people, people have told me, like, stop calling yourself that. I'm like, uh -huh. no, you don't know what I'm doing. This is a this is this is powerful, as powerful as a mudra. You know what right. I'm saying? Like th this is something different. You know what you call yourself as a warrior when it's wartime. You right. know what I'm saying? Like, you know, like are, are you trying to make it back home or are you trying to be cute? Who the fuck do you gotta be <laughs> to get back to the crib? <laughs> yes. you know what I'm saying? Nigga, please. Oh you know, man, yeah. who you gotta be to get back to the crib? Yeah. Dude, niggas putting that shit right here. <laughs> Who are you? Who are you? Are you Nighthawk? I'm Nighthawk. <laughs> yeah, all right, Nighthawk. Well, I'll see you at the crib. You know what I'm saying? That's how I gotta be. Oh my goodness, dude. That is hilarious, but that's funny, man. Now, when, when you start coming up, did you know a lot of other comedians in the in the industry, or did you make friends as you went on? No, nah, man. You know what's crazy? Um, uh, my mom was a big fan of stand-up comedy. My dad, you know, they they allowed me to watch Eddie Murphy Raw and all that stuff early on. Um, and so I couldn't get into the comedy because I was like eight, nine, ten. So like my mom and them, they would go to like, uh, you know, they would go to the comedy clubs, uh, Coco's House of Comedy, Bees Comedy mm -hmm. in Detroit, and they would go and they would see the shows. And my mom would come home two o'clock in the morning, three o'clock, and wake me up and be like, "Oh my God, tonight Mike Bonner was talking about how he and oh man, downtown Tony Brown said." So this is years I'm knowing these niggas jokes. Oh, I get, man. I you know, I come of age like they don't even know. They raised me in a way that before they met me, I, they were I, I was prepping to be the king of Detroit comedy. Like I was prepping to come be the Simba. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. you know, and I feel like it's a little guy out there who mama telling him my jokes. You know what I'm saying? Who like right. man, what happened? Because my mom just she just believes she like yo this nigga. My mom like yo you might be the funniest human I've ever met as a kid. Teenager, uh, adult, like you know what I'm saying? So yeah. it was like it was it was easy for them to be like, Yeah, this is what you want to do. They made me go to college and do all this other stuff. I could have did this at 18 and we could have been eating, but you know what I'm saying? You know, <laughs> it, it like we could have been, <laughs> been eating, but college fun though. You know what I'm saying? It was dope. Now, are you low what are you in Detroit or are you in LA? I'm in LA right now. Oh man, yeah, yeah, dude, we gotta we gotta get up, man. Yeah, yeah man. Let me know when you hit some stages, man. You, you gotta hit the real stage. I, you know, you only a year in, man. You know what I'm saying? You know, you gotta hit the hit the ground running. You gotta do the duck walk with, with, with other little fellas. You know what I'm saying? You can't get up here with you know, you know what I'm saying? You comedy story, this improv. That shit to make your head sure you be like, oh my god, these motherfuckers in here. That shit crazy, man. I remember my first time, man. I came out to LA. And uh, you know, I'm I'm the type of comedian I need about seven minutes to get into some because because I'm a talker, uh -huh. you know. And they and they like to give you three minutes. What you got? Go. <laughs> they end up with a cigarette next, you right? Know? And so I uh, I go up. I'm doing three minutes, you know. Um, at the time, my wife was pregnant, so I'm talking about you know what I feel like, you know, you know, and I'm just trying to get into some introspective my style of comedy. Right. And then they flashing the light, and I didn't know where the light was. It was embarrassing. I did like five minutes, supposed to do three. A bunch of comedians is in line to go up. And the lady get up there, like, this is not fucking Detroit, okay? Mind the light and pull your goddamn pants up. <laughs> I was like, fuck you, bitch. And I was all embarrassed and shit. <laughs> I was like, man, dog, this is, you know, I'm used to, I'm used to being, you know, in Detroit, man, where I was a big fish. And so I right. came out here and I was just getting knocked around you know this is way back before i even started writing out here i just was came out here trying to you know do some comedy it was it's been a crazy journey man and you're gonna really enjoy it bro you a year in you got so much stuff yeah. so many experiences man on the road and you know out here being broke and hopeful <laughs> broken that's, that's a hell of a feeling boy broken like nigga i'm broke but nigga <laughs> you know what i'm saying like that's a it's a it's just it's i think about that journey and people be like oh it's the it's the journey not the destination and they're right right they're right. right man all that fun man like you know when it's done it's done and you are who you are you're gonna be what you're gonna be and congratulations but them stories man when you look back yeah it's just like you know man it's crazy it's, now now tell tell me about a time the first time you bombed because i remember my second time on stage i bombed like okay. 
And it was it was like it wasn't a bum like, oh, I don't want to do this anymore. It was like I could have done better, man. I'm could've gonna tell you, better. all right. So look, I've told so many like I've only bombed luckily, like maybe like eight, nine times, right? And, and I've been doing this for 11 years. So wow. I'm, just, I'm, I'm just giving you a no cap. Eight, my first time on stage, standing ovation. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, you know, uh, that time in L.A., that's one of the times I bombed. You know what I'm saying? Um, but uh, so there was a time. So when I got fired from my position as a, 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 a copywriter, uh, executive, uh, uh, you know, a marketing executive or whatever, advertising exec. Um, I had been doing comedy for like maybe four months at that time, and at that time, I knew I was that comedy was it. Right. I would be at work looking out the window, like, man, I could be on tour right now, I could be in somebody playing, you know. I just feel it. I was only a couple months in, but I'm like, nigga, I, I could be, you know, whatever. And they knew that, and so you know, anyway, so um, I had did a show at Western Michigan, mm -hmm. right? And so that ended up being one of my hottest colleges. They really, really loved my shit. I'm sorry, wait, was it Western? Yeah, it had to have been. Yeah, it was Western, Western. So the kids is hype. It's like it's like summertime. So the kids, they leave in class. We're going to do the show at a hookah bar. It's me and my boy Tommy. Uh, we had, um, uh, oh, man. Um, it was, it was, it was, it was, a, it was a few of us. Anyway. The build up to the show was so crazy, right? Went out to lunch with a couple of the noobs, you know, because you know, we they like, man, you, you about to kill it tonight. Everybody <laughs> coming out, we got everybody going crazy, you know, and they just was taking me around everywhere. CP in town, man. You know what's going on. And so, okay, here's what happened. I just thought about it. what happened was I had a show with Lil Duval. I did 30 Duval did an hour, but the 30 that I did was a 30 that niggas had never heard before. Uh -huh. It was a very hot 30. And it was like, man, who was this new nigga? Da, da, da. So that's when they brought me back for this. People was leaving class. They wanted to make sure they had a seat. Like it was like a hype. And I just remember the hookah lounge being packed and ain't no stage. I'm 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 right with the people. I'm, and it's just like I just I was exhausted mentally. Like I wow. had, I had over talked and you know, that's when I started to understand why it's a green room and why uh -huh. I gotta go sit my ass down <laughs> before I kind of do a show. And I mean, I was just like, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't have anything. And it was just, I was so embarrassed because at that time I had only been winning in it. You know what right. I'm saying? Like, you know, and I just remember like nobody wanted to even, they was like, all right, bro. Yeah. All right. Nobody want to look at you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's just like, it just wasn't funny. I, it was just too interesting. I, I might have been too high. I don't know. It was just too, you know what I'm saying? Like, right. some kids looking at me like, what? And I was <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? You see what I'm saying? It, was, it was just like, but that shit just, you know, yeah, man. It just, you know, you remember because they stick with you as they should. If you respect the game, you know, it, it stick with you. You know, yeah. I love my mom. I remember some of my worst whoopings because that shit stuck with me. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. you know, if it mean a lot to you, is you ain't gonna never forget it. I don't care how many times it is. That's true, man. We got a question here from Bonnie Donaldson. She said, "What motivate y'all to pursue your dreams?" I'll let you take it first. I think uh, for me, man, it was um, a couple of things. Number one, I was I was like burning through goals very very quickly. Mm -hmm. I think that I was either underestimating myself as I was setting my goals mm -hmm. or um, I was I was just I was just really, really moving fast. And so I remember um, I had wrote this Walmart Christmas commercial, which, you know, Walmart was our biggest client and um, Christmas was their biggest you know spot. And I wasn't even a copywriter at the time. I was on the account side. I had been begging to write copy, but on the, at the time. They needed me for my politicalness. They needed me mm -hmm. to, I was talking to clients and I was doing different stuff like that. That's what they found me more valuable in the company at that time. Um, but they had a bunch of rounds go off where the client was just not happy with the direction of this, of this Christmas commercial, mm -hmm. because this needed to be a black Christmas commercial. We had just elected Barack Obama, but he hadn't been inaugurated yet. It was that Christmas. Okay. And so, you know, we, we were in a downturn in the recession, but it was very optimistic that, we, you know, change was on the way. Mm -hmm. And so we needed a commercial to 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 show that. 
um, without overexpressing, you know what I'm saying? Like materialism, this needs to be like a together commercial. And so um, they were just striking out our all-star team. Mm -hmm. And so I ended up pitching. I, I wrote a song to it. Anyway, they bought it. And um, that like jump started my career. The mm -hmm. biggest pinnacle moment that I could have in that office, what everybody had wanted, what I wanted, what it was like, you know, and um, a dream time. And it just wasn't enough. I got all the way there and I'm like, man, this ain't enough it was right. like it was like it was like you know what i'm saying it was like it was like it, it was like you know having sex with beyonce and then right before you but <laughs> you did give you an iou like we give you another nut in a couple weeks man we ain't got no more nut. it was like it was it was it was nothing you know what i'm saying and i just remember i just re, i just kind of remember being like man Fuck it. If I'm gonna keep getting goals like this, then right. I want to be what I want to be in my heart. I want right. to be a star. I want to do this shit for real. Mm -hmm. If I, I'm sick of being a funny guy at the office, I'm sick of watching motherfuckers in tears when they talk to me. Right. I'm sick of that. Like I need it. I need to know it for real. I need it to be for real. And I think that was what flicked the switch for me was that I was supposed to feel so accomplished, and I just I didn't. You didn't. Yeah. And that's what let me know. Yeah, let me go ahead and get the fuck up out of here. Let somebody else have this job. <laughs> man, I think we share a lot of similarities, man. I, I, and you put that in perspective when you said burning through your goals. Yeah, yeah I think that's where I've been in my life, like uh, up until last year, you know, and well, yeah, late last year. I was just like, there's got to be more in life, man. And it's like my goals, man, they be to most people, they like, Negro, what you doing? You know? But to me, it's like, oh, no, I can do it. I can do that. You know, I, that's not one thing I've done in my life that I didn't believe I could do it. I mean, I was sitting at home one day, man. See, I seen a commercial about this uh, empowerment campaign from the from the National Urban League. Dude, I it, within five minutes of seeing that commercial, I was like, oh, I reached out to somebody that I knew that knew somebody that was attached to it. And I was like, oh, oh, I can be the face of that. The thing was this, this was what they talking about. Oh, let me hit you in 30 minutes. They called me. I told them what I saw. Next thing they know, I was like, hey, uh, get your agent on the phone, man. Let's do an MOU. And just like that, I became the face of a national campaign. But see, that's, around the that's the thing, though, right? Like that access that you had to that friend that you understood that had. It's like you can't you can't feel guilty for that. Right. Right. This needs to be it's like, you know, this is this is your formula. It's the reason why Barack Obama is Barack Obama. You right. know, what I'm saying you don't become that without the correct understanding of your proximity to connections that you need. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, and um, yeah, that's just bro. That was a very intelligent move on your yeah. behalf. And that's how you do it in this business. Yeah, how you do it. I don't I don't wait for nobody. You know, I don't wait for my managers to call me and tell me we got something for you. Right. I right. call them and say, how can we sell this? Right. That's true. I call them and say, hey, I swear to God, I call them and say, hey, I want the I want to buy the rights to supermarket sweep. They said Leslie Jones just got it. I was like, fuck. Look it up. <laughs> and and it, I swear to God. Right. I, I just had that thought one day and I called them and they said, yeah, Leslie Jones got it. She's doing it. Yeah. I'm like, damn. <laughs> What are the odds? I, I right. respect it. I respect it. Right. You know what I'm saying? But I mean, it's like, yeah, bro, you, you have to you have to get out and take it, man. Like, I don't think enough people tell us how mighty we are. True. You know what I'm saying? And how yeah. we can move and maneuver our um physical environment. Like this physical shit ain't shit. Right. And so if you understand your ability to manipulate this little shit, bro, like, man, yeah, bro, like what you did, that was a power move on yeah. your destiny. You know what Absolutely. I'm saying? Like, yeah, I've done that. I've, I've done that many a time. And that's what you got to do. Yeah. You, gotta, I believe you know man. what I'm saying? You kick in the door, waving the faux faux with a resume. Like, who the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Just kick it open, man. Dude, I can talk to you all night, man. Listen, um, yeah. are we connected on social media at all? Uh, I'm sure. I, I thought we were. But yeah, if not, bro, follow me. Man, at Comedian CP. Everybody who's listening, follow me. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna definitely get it. Are you in the clubhouse? Yeah, I am in clubhouse, man. But I had to get up off of there, man. They be on there snitching. I just noticed that. 
they be on there listening and re, you know judging and recording. I, the first time I got on, I thought I thought we was just it was just the homies. Right, like, there's five hundred motherfuckers in there. I'm like, oh, y'all, this <laughs> thing just, in here, you know what I'm saying? But, well, yeah, they've changed it. They changed shit. it now. You so, say what? Now they've changed it. You can't record uh, without you, without you without the person in the room knowing that somebody's trying to record. It it's, it snitches on them now. Oh so, yeah, because them yeah. motherfuckers see they was trying to they was trying to catch me up. Talk about he was he admitted to pleasure in a fraternity. It's like okay, <laughs> look at you, That's crazy. You look hey, crazy. Well, you know? man, we got we got to get up in the uh, clubhouse and do a room together, man. All right, bet it up. Let's get it. Yeah, I'm, I'm a uh, so when I get in there tonight, I'm gonna follow you and uh, and then we can we can link up and, and do a room. Now, if people want to get at you, uh, how they can connect with you on online. Man, just follow me uh, on Instagram at comedian CP. You know, DM is like an email. You know what I'm saying? It really is, um, right. and that's where I be at. You know, what I'm saying Twitter, um, everything. Comedian CP, my Patreon. I have a lot of content on there that you might not see anywhere else. Right. Uh, that's at comedian CP, and uh, I have a Discord. Um, shout out to Hippie Goals. I see you in there. I, I'm, I'm, re I'm remembering. Shout out this Discord. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> Uh yeah, that's it, man. Just you know, I got a new uh comedy show I'm about to drop on New Year's Day with uh Lewis Belt, who was a uh, rookie of the year with um uh Boogie and then Teddy Ray. Everybody know Teddy Ray. Yeah, we got a uh the three of us, we got a little um a little special that we dropping that we just did on our own, some little stand up that was dope. Uh, you know, three headed monster coming out. So we're we gonna rock with that. And uh, I'm just continuing to drop content the best way I can. People want Reggie Bow. Trying to find a way to do it that makes sense without right. you know being corny for my dog. I want him to be, you know, the coldest, you know what I'm saying? So I gotta figure it out, man. I don't want to be around nobody. So we we figure it out. All right, man. Well, listen, man, we're gonna definitely get together, man, so we can wrap a little bit more. So I, I definitely appreciate you coming on my show, man. It was an honor talking to you, brother. Bro, always a treat when the real niggas meet, man. You gotta know that, you know what I'm saying? You gotta know that always forever be the facts. Hey, man. CP, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for coming on the fence, man. <laughs> yo, 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 yo. You're in the mix. The world's finest, man. DJ, Stout. Half the radio on the telly. You're in the mix, Lord.